Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Max AC channel. For this hashtag not spawn November, we will be continuing to take a look at four kitchen equipment that you probably don't have, but will probably need after watching these videos. For this week's recipe, we will be making some steamed cha siu bao. For this episode, we will actually be looking at two different recipes, one that is more traditional and one that is much quicker to make. I wanted to compare the two to see how they differed, and I really like cha siu bao, so I didn't mind making a lot of them. For each version, you will need to make two things, the bao dough and the cha siu filling. First we will be prepping the dough. The recipe that I will be following for the dough is one that I found in this cookbook, Mooncakes and Milk Bread by Christina Cho. This is actually a really cool recipe book with lots of stories by Christina, as well as great Chinese bakery recipes, so I highly recommend getting a copy. For ingredients, you will need 5 cups of all-purpose flour, a half cup of sugar, 2 teaspoons or 1 packet of instant yeast. You could also use active dry yeast, just make sure to make the appropriate substitutes. 1 teaspoon of baking powder, half teaspoon of coarse salt. You could probably use regular salt, but I wanted to be accurate to the recipe. You will also need one and a half cups of warm water. You want this to be warm to activate the yeast, but not too warm where you end up killing it. And you will also need some neutral flavor oil for the bowl. In a mixing bowl, whisk to combine the flour, sugar, instant yeast, baking powder, and salt. If you have an electric mixer, I recommend using that. I don't have one, so I'll be using a hand whisk in my hands. Then, once that's well combined, Slowly mix the warm water into the flour mixture to form a shaggy dough. Then knead this dough by hand until smooth, which should take about 10 to 12 minutes. It's a lot easier to work with if you move the dough to a lightly floured surface, so do that when kneading by hand. I'm actually doubling the recipe, so it might take more time than that, and it actually took me a lot longer, but just keep kneading till it's smooth. If you're using a stand mixture instead, Set the speed to medium high and mix for 8 to 9 minutes. One way to see if the dough is properly kneaded is to do the window pane test. Basically, you want to pinch off a little piece of dough and then stretch it out. If you're able to stretch the piece thin enough to see through it without tearing it, it's ready to go. Once the dough is fully kneaded, pinch and pull the dough into a smooth ball. Don't worry about making it perfect, just try to make it one smooth surface. Then. Brush a large bowl with the oil and add the dough to the bowl. Turn the dough in the oil to coat and then cover the bowl with some plastic wrap. Allow the dough to proof in a warm spot for about one hour or so until it has doubled in size. You can also let it proof in the refrigerator overnight, which is what I'll be doing since I'll be marinating the pork overnight as well. Speaking of which, for the traditional chashu pork, I will be following Christina's recipe as well. We will need three pounds of boneless pork shoulder or butt half cup of honey, quarter cup of hoisin sauce, half cup of oyster sauce, quarter cup of Shaoxing cooking wine or dry sherry wine as substitute, one teaspoon of Chinese five spice powder, one teaspoon of coarse salt, half teaspoon of ground white pepper, and a quarter cup of ketchup. First, cut the pork lengthwise into three to four one and a half inch wide planks and transfer it to a large resealable bag. I guess my meat wasn't exactly boneless, but just cut around it if yours has a surprise bone as well. Next, combine the honey, hoisin sauce, oyster sauce, wine, five spice, salt, and white pepper, and whisk until smooth. Place about two-thirds of this marinade into the bag with the pork. Then, seal the bag and toss the pork in the marinade until evenly coated. With the remaining marinade, Whisk in the ketchup, and then cover with plastic wrap. Place the bag in a bowl, and then put both bowls into the fridge to marinate overnight. The next day, remove the pork and the reserve marinade from the fridge about an hour before cooking to allow it to come to room temperature. While you wait, preheat the oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Line a large rim baking sheet or roasting pan with aluminum foil 
and set a wire rack on the baking sheet. Or if you couldn't find one like me, you can use a disposable one. If you don't have a wire rack, just place it on the sheet. It won't get as crispy since it will cook in its juices, but since we will be using it for bao, it's not really that important. Then, once the oven is done preheating, place the pork in and roast for 20 minutes. Remove from the oven and brush the pork with some of the reserve sauce and roast for another 10 minutes. Then take it out again, flip the pork and brush with more sauce and then roast for 10 more minutes. Take it out one more time to brush the pork with the remaining sauce and then roast until shiny with slightly burnt edges, about 10 more minutes. Remove from the oven and allow it to rest for 20 minutes. You could of course use this as is, but since we will be using all of it for the filling, cut it up into half inch pieces and transfer it to a bowl. In addition to the pork, you will need some oil, some onions, two thirds cup of water, four tablespoons of cornstarch, two tablespoons of honey, two tablespoons of oyster sauce, two tablespoons of soy sauce, one teaspoon of coarse salt, and a half teaspoon of ground white pepper. In a skillet, heat up some oil, and while you wait, mince up some onions. Once the skillet is ready, saute the onions for three to four minutes until they brown on the edges. Then, transfer them to the bowl with the pork pieces. Next, in a saucepan, add the water, cornstarch, honey, oyster sauce, soy sauce, coarse salt, and ground white pepper, and whisk until smooth. Bring the mixture to a boil and then reduce to a simmer and stir until the mixture thickens, about one minute or so. Pour the mixture over the pork and onions and toss to combine. Cover the bowl with plastic wrap and place it in the refrigerator until you're ready to use the filling. Now that we are about halfway through, if all of this sounds like too much work, but you still want to make some baos, I found another cha siu bao filling recipe that is a lot quicker, but is still very delicious. This recipe is by Sung Kyung Longest, which I found on her website. But before we make the filling, first we need to prepare another batch of bao dough. You could of course use the recipe from earlier, but if you don't have time, I recommend using pre-mixed bao flour. This one's pretty simple to use. You just need some sugar, some water, and some oil. Of course, follow the instructions on your package, but if you have the same one as mine, follow along. In a bowl, mix together a half cup of sugar and a cup of water. Reserve about a tablespoon of flour from the package to use when needed, and then with the remaining flour, gradually mix it in the sugar water mixture. Then, once well combined, knead for about 15 minutes. Once that's done, add about a tablespoon of oil and knead for another 10 minutes or so. Do the window pane test to check if it's done kneading. Pinch and pull the dough into a ball and then cover the dough and let it rest for 30 minutes. So I guess that wasn't really much of a time save, but it definitely is convenient that everything is already pre-mixed together in the appropriate ratios. Now in terms of the quick filling, you will need a half cup of chicken stock or beef broth for substitute, one tablespoon of cornstarch, two tablespoons of oyster sauce, two tablespoons of hoisin sauce, two tablespoons of soy sauce, two tablespoons of sugar, one tablespoon of Shaoxing wine or substitute, a small pinch of Chinese five spice powder, an eighth teaspoon of black pepper, two tablespoons of cooking oil, one medium sized onion, one garlic clove, and 10 ounces of ground pork. First, heat up some oil in a skillet and while you wait, mince up your onion as well as your garlic. In addition, in a bowl, combine the stock or broth, cornstarch, oyster sauce, hoisin sauce, soy sauce, sugar, wine, Chinese five spice, and black pepper. Then, once your skillet is nice and hot, saute your onion and garlic for two to three minutes until the onions are soft and transparent. Next, add your pork and cook it for five minutes or until it is no longer pink. Make sure to break the pork into little pieces during this time. Then add the sauce we made earlier, 
Bring it to a boil and then reduce heat to medium to simmer until it thickens about 2 to 5 minutes. Transfer the cooked filling to a bowl and let it cool in the refrigerator while we prepare the dough. Once your desired filling is done, grab your proof dough and give it a couple of punches to deflate it and then transfer it to a lightly floured surface. Pinch and pull the dough back into a ball shape and then make a hole in the center. Keep stretching and shaping the dough until you make a ring of about an inch and a half in thickness. Then divide the dough into inch and a half pieces. For the homemade dough, this will be about 24 pieces. So cut the ring in half and then cut it in half again and then cut it in half one more time and then cut this into thirds. And for the quick dough, it makes 14 pieces. So cut it in half and then cut that into sevenths. Yeah, 14 doesn't really divide that easily, but do your best to make even pieces. Once your dough is properly portioned, roll each piece into a smooth ball. Then it's time to prepare your bows. Roll each piece into a four inch round circle with a rolling pin. The trick with this is to roll it so that you get thinner edges and a thicker middle. I find it easier to do this with my hands though, so do what works for you. Once your bun is ready to stuff, Grab your respective filling and place a heaping tablespoon of it in the center. Now it's time to seal the bun. There are many techniques to do this, but I like to grab the edge of the bun and use my thumb and fingers to pinch and fold the dough like so. Use your thumb to push the filling in the pocket that you make, but try not to push too hard, otherwise it'll rip. Just keep folding the dough until you run out of dough to fold, and then twist the top to seal the bun completely. This step is a bit tricky, so don't worry if you can't get it to look super pretty. The most important thing is to have the bun sealed. So if you have any holes like this, just try to pinch them closed to keep the filling from spilling out. Then place it on a piece of parchment paper. And that's one bun done, with many, many more to go. It gets easier the more you do it, so just take your time and they'll all turn out just fine. Though, if it's taking you a long time to form the buns, just cover them with a towel and place them in the fridge to prevent them from overproofing. Then, once they're all ready, let them rest for 30 to 45 minutes until they grow about one and a half times larger. This step is important to have big fluffy boughs. You could also steam them as you make them, but just make sure to let them rest for a little bit before cooking them. If you have any leftover bao dough, you can use them to make manto or gua bao. For the manto, you don't have to do anything extra, just leave it in a ball shape. But for the gua bao, roll the dough into an oval-like shape and then fold it into a semicircle. You should brush some oil to keep the sides from sticking to one another, but I forgot to do that. Now, it's finally time to introduce our special equipment for this week, the Humble Bamboo Steamer. I picked this one up at my local Asian grocery store, but if you can't find one nearby, you definitely should be able to find one online. You could also use a metal steamer. They are functionally the same, but mm, I don't know. I just feel like the bamboo adds a little bit of extra to the flavor. Maybe it's all psychological, but I definitely recommend bamboo over metal if you can. Regardless of what material you use, to set up your steamer, fill up a pot with some water and bring it to a boil. The amount of water you put in doesn't really matter. Just make sure you have enough so that it doesn't all evaporate while you're steaming your buns. Then just place your buns in the steamer basket allowing at least two inches between each bun. They will grow a lot when they steam, so give them more room than you think. I was able to fit about four buns per layer, so for the rest of the buns, put them in the fridge while you wait to prevent them from overproofing. Once the water is boiling and your steamer is full, place it on top of the pot and let it steam for 10 minutes. Don't touch it just yet. Next, turn off the heat and let the bun steam for an additional five minutes. This is to prevent the buns from collapsing. Once that's done, carefully remove them from the steamer and allow them to cool a bit before serving. And if you have more buns to make, repeat this step until they're all cooked. And with that, your steamed cha shu bao are ready to eat. If you can somehow resist eating all of them immediately, for your leftover buns, just place them in an airtight container, like a resealable bag, and then place them either in the fridge for up to four days 
or in the freezer for up to three months. Then to reheat them, you can microwave them individually for about 30 seconds or so, or since we have our steamer, steam the buns until soft and warm through for about two minutes if from the fridge or for about 10 minutes if frozen. Speaking of which, the steamer is a really simple but versatile kitchen equipment. Along with steaming buns, you can use it to steam vegetables and even seafood. For those curious about the differences between the two types of buns that I made in the video, I found that the Quick Bows dough was a bit fluffier and the filling was a bit more five spice in flavor and was a bit saltier. With the more traditional bao, the dough was a bit chewier. I think that this was probably because I overworked the dough or I added a little bit too much flour, but it still tasted pretty good. More specifically, the filling had more of a subtle savory meat flavor. Texture-wise, I preferred the traditional bun since the pork pieces gave it a bit more substantial bite than the ground pork. Though for both, I felt like they were missing something. I realized after the fact that usually chashu is made with fermented red bean paste, which is what gives it its signature color and flavor. The hoisin sauce is what many use as a substitute since red bean paste can be hard to find, and the flavor is pretty similar. So by no means does it taste bad, just different. Most people probably wouldn't even be able to tell the difference between the two, but because I've had so many chashu bao before, it was just something I noticed. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the video. In the comments below, let me know how it went if you decided to make it, and let me know if there's anything you want me to make next. Like the video, share it with your friends and family, and subscribe to this channel for more episodes of the Max AC channel. And remember, if you want to stay cool in the kitchen, turn your AC to the Max and watch the Max AC channel. Eat me! Eat me!